Welcome to the 2021 virtual tour of historic plantations and homes, which for the 74th year is sponsored by the women of Prince George Winyo Parish Church. My name is Virginia Dugan, and I want to welcome you to our first ever virtual tour on this, our church's 300th anniversary of its founding. On behalf of the tour committee, vestry, and our rector, we are grateful for your viewing participation. Each year over the past 74 years, our church members in this community have prepared to welcome visitors to this wonderful tour that exists for two primary reasons, to raise money for outreach and preserve our historical buildings. As a bonus, we get to tell the history of this unique place in the Americas. Since its beginning, the tour has raised over $1.2 million, preserving our buildings and supporting many worthy causes in our area and around the world. Locally, Habitat for Humanity, Helping Hands, Salvation Army, Friendship Place, and many others have benefited from tour donations, from bicycles for clergy in Uganda to children's home in Honduras. We think we are expressing God's goodness and generosity, making a difference here at home and abroad. On behalf of the tour committee, it is my privilege and honor to welcome viewers to this short but powerful virtual tour, lovingly produced by the staff of our church with help from Jason Wheeler Productions. We are proud to give you at home a taste of what we hope to offer in full next year in 2022, when we will be celebrating 75 years and hopefully out from underneath the effects of the pandemic. Thanks for supporting this effort. Thanks for watching. And we hope to see you all here next year. Keep the faith. The Lord is still in charge. God bless you all. And God bless Prince George Winyaw Church for at least another 300 years. Welcome to Prince George Church. Come on in. Now, the parish of Prince George was founded in 1721. However, there wasn't even a town here yet. Uh, a small but elegant church was built on the Black River for Prince George Parish. Uh, by 1734, the town of Georgetown had been founded and was growing nicely. So it was decided to divide the parish and build a big church here in town. The pews are an unusual configuration for the 21st century. Uh, they are uh, the British colonial style. Now Prince George is one of the few colonial churches left in America that has never changed the inside. So these are the original pews from 1747 when the very first service was held. There are numbers on the doors of each pew because they were owned by the people by the year and considered private property. The window behind the altar is a beautiful English stained glass window that was given to Prince George in 1872 after the war between the states was over because of marauding and vandalism going on. The chapel that this window came from was St. Mary's out on Hagley Plantation. Uh, so much marauding and vandalism was going on, it was feared that these would be lost. So they were given to Prince George at that time, 1872. One of the most interesting things about Prince George Church is that during the Revolutionary War, the British stabled their horses in this church. We don't think in the pews, but probably in the aisles. Uh, as well as the Union Army in 1865 did the same thing. And they pastured their horses out here in the graveyard. The gallery, or the choir loft, was built in 1819. We think that it went all the way across the entire width of the church. In 1886, it was reduced to the size that it is now. Vestibule, or narthex, the entrance into the church, and the bell tower were added in 1824. Uh, the bell that is currently in Prince George Church that peals the hour is the original one from St. Mary's Church. Uh, it was created in 1857 for Plowden Weston at Hagley Plantation, and it's still with us today. Well, I hope that's a good taste of what you will see in 2022 when you come for our annual plantation and townhouse tours. Thank you. Good afternoon and welcome to the chancel here in Prince George Winyaw. To kick this uh, spectacular movie event off, 
we'd like to open with prayer. My name is Gary Beeson. I'm the rector of Prince George Winyaw Church. Thank you, Virginia, and thank you, Muff Boyd, for getting us to this point. I'm going to turn it over to Ryan Landis for an opening prayer. This is a prayer for the mission of the church. Almighty God, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to reconcile the world to yourself. We praise and bless you for those whom you have sent in the power of your Spirit to preach the gospel to all nations. We thank you that in all parts of the earth, a community of love has been gathered together by their prayers and labors, and that in every place, your servants call upon your name. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I look forward to welcoming all of you to the rectory a little later on in this movie. But for now, let's head to Arcadia Plantation. Arcadia, as it is known today, was once seven prosperous rice plantations. Among these is Prospect Hill, the only one of the plantations on which the original dwelling still remains. Originally granted to Percival Pauley in 1711, the tract stayed in Pauley's possession for nearly 60 years. It was then acquired by Joseph Alston, known locally as Joseph of the Oaks. Joseph's son Thomas is believed to have built the beautiful house which can still be seen today. It is said to be an exact copy of the house built at Clifton by Thomas's older brother William, where he had the great honor of entertaining President George Washington during his southern tour of 1791. Thomas died suddenly in 1795, leaving his widow his plantation and house frame. Mary Alston then married Benjamin UG II. In 1819, President James Monroe was a guest of the UGs at Prospect Hill. Shortly after the death of Mr. UG, his widow sold the plantation to Colonel Joshua John Ward, who passed it on to his son, Benjamin UG Ward. With the loss of the war between the states, the place was partitioned and eventually lost to foreclosure. In 1906, the property was purchased by Dr. Isaac Edward Emerson, who modernized the house, built the two wings on either side of the house, acquired the adjacent plantations, and named the entire tract Arcadia. Upon his death in 1931, the plantation was passed to his grandson, George Vanderbilt. Since 1961, it was the home of Mr. Vanderbilt's daughter, Lucille Pate, and her family. Lucille Pate passed away in 2018. In 1970 and again in 1985, portions of the outlying plantations were sold in order to facilitate the care and upkeep of the plantation. In the carriage house, there is an extensive collection of Vanderbilt memorabilia, including a photo collection, clothing, and personal coaches of the Vanderbilt family. As you leave the main house, you'll pass by St. Anne's Church. This church was erected by Major UG, who served in the Revolutionary Army during the 18th century and was used as the hospital for slaves until the close of the war between the states in 1865. It was rebuilt by Dr. Emerson for the African Americans of Arcadia in 1927. Behind the altar, there was a small school, which was in full operation until 1956. I'm very delighted to be a part of the virtual plantation tours of 2021, and we hope that in 2022, Arcadia will be welcoming you in person. Welcome to Rosemont. My name is Philip Ness and I'm a parishioner of Prince George Winya Church in Georgetown. Rosemont was part of the original Georgetown tract granted by the Lord's proprietors to the Perry family. The property changed hands but was bought around 1825 by Benjamin Austin for his grandson, Joseph Benjamin Pyatt, whose father had died when the boy was quite young. Pyatt married Joanna Hazel Ward, daughter of Joshua John Ward of Brook Green, and their house at Rosemont was built in 1850 while the couple was on their honeymoon in Europe. 
In the same year, Joseph Pyatt produced 570,000 pounds of rice with 291 slaves. The Pyatt family was still living at Rosemont when the house burned in 1894. They eventually moved into the Georgetown townhouse, which had been bought by Benjamin Austin about 1825. The plantation was then used to grow crops, cattle, and pine trees. Only the avenue of oaks and the foundation of the old house remained. In 1991, Benjamin Austin's great-great-granddaughter and her husband built a house overlooking the old rice fields near the site of the original caretaker's house. Rosemont is the residence of the Wright Reverend and Mrs. C. Fitzsimmons Allison. Welcome to the rectory at Prince George Winyaw Parish Church. Uh, the rectory is a beautiful restored home believed to be dating back to the 1770s. Uh, the architectural style is what's known as a two over two. There are two large main rooms downstairs and then almost identical two large main rooms on the second floor. The third floor has two beautiful small guest rooms, bathrooms on all floors. Originally the house had a porch that wrapped all the way around three-fourths of the structure. And today, only modest improvements have been made, mostly to maintain its structural integrity. The house was believed to have been constructed by Mr. William Cutneau. Uh, he also built two other homes that are on the tour or have been on the tour in the past, the Savage Smith House and the Hutchinson House. Uh, they believe Mr. Cutneau built this home as well because of some records that we have dating in 1850 where Mr. Cutneau's son put the home up for sale. I am the third family to live in the house since the church has owned it. There were two previous clergy families that lived here and Susan and I are thrilled to be part of this history and part of this church. We look forward to everyone joining us next year, coming through the beautiful grounds here and seeing the interior of this place. See you next year. Welcome to the Summer Chapel, Prince Frederick's Church in Plannersville. On April 9, 1734, the parish of Prince George Winya was divided into Prince George and Prince Frederick parishes. Old Prince George on the Black River fell inside the boundaries of Prince Frederick Parish and so became the church of that parish. While a new church was being built in Georgetown for Prince George Parish. The old wooden church was used until 1835, when the Reverend Hugh Fraser donated the land on the PD, where the present chapel was constructed. The chapel was consecrated in 1837 by the Right Reverend Nathaniel Bowen. The congregation grew very rapidly, and in 1859, construction was started on a large and elegant Gothic-style church. Work was stopped in 1864 because all labor and provisions were tied up in the war between the states. After the war, the impoverished congregation was unable to continue the construction of the church until 1876, when a gift of $1,700 from John Earl Alston of New York permitted its completion. The old church, now chapel, was then moved to Plannersville, where it now stands. Prince Frederick's church was demolished in 1966, and only the tower remains. In 1735, Exchange Plantation was granted by King George II to Colonel William Waites. It is believed that the house was constructed between 1750 and 1770 and is the oldest standing original home on the P.D. River. The planter Davison McDowell owned this tract as early as 1825. 
Exchange was so named because the owner received it in exchange for another piece of property. In 1837, Exchange was sold to Robert Weston, who willed it to Francis Weston. Robert F. W. Austin bought it in 1843. Governor Austin died in 1864 and willed Exchange to his daughter Elizabeth Waites, the future Mrs. John Julius Pringle II. Austin's two sons, Benjamin and Charles, bought Exchange in 1869. In 1899, the Gandalos Rice Company purchased the property and then sold it in 1915 to Thomas G. Samworth. Exchange was then purchased in 1945 by Mr. and Mrs. Thomas S. Ragsdale. To the rear of the original one-and-a-half-story house, a new portion as large as the original was added in 1946. Exchange consists of 624 acres of highland, rice fields, and an old rice barn which was blown down during Hurricane Hugo and has been rebuilt to the exact dimensions. Exchange has remained in the Ragsdale family since 1945 and is now owned by Mr. and Mrs. Ragsdale's grandson, Charles S. Ragsdale and family. The original land grants for Chakor Wood Plantation were given to John Austin, one of the earlier settlers of Georgetown County, in 1731 and 1734. The property was sold out of the family for a number of years, but by 1806, it was purchased by John Austin's grandson, Benjamin Austin Jr. Most historians have agreed, in the absence of documentation, that the house dates to before 1809. It was remodeled by Robert F. W. Austin in 1838. Brick foundations and burned embers still in place are archeological evidence that a much earlier house was on the site. Chakora Wood was developed by Robert Francis Withers Austin into one of the most productive rice plantations of the county. He was active in politics and in 1856 was elected governor of South Carolina. It was to the present house that R.F.W. Austin brought his bride, Adele Pettigrew, in 1832. Chakora Wood is with her daughter Elizabeth, Mrs. John Julius Springle, author of A Woman Rice Planter, Chronicles of Chakora Wood, and Rab Dab lived, planted rice, and wrote until her death in 1921. D.C. Waddell Jr. of Asheville, North Carolina acquired the property in 1926 from Mrs. Pringle's estate. He renovated the old dwelling and reclaimed the grounds from the encroaching forest to create the present garden foundation and shrub planting. Mr. and Mrs. Jamie W. Constance purchased the estate from Mrs. Waddell's heirs in 1984. They completely restored the formal garden, the house and its older wing, and all of the historic outbuildings. Recently, the plantation was purchased by six investors who plan to not only maintain its historic conditions, but also plan to reestablish the original layout of the rice fields on the plantation.